it's been a very interesting few weeks. Um, just talk about the kinds of conversations you guys are having lately. Um, I think uh, just uh, just a basic conversation about what we do, what we can do a lot with this situation that just occurred. And uh, I've uh, seen Seth speak out a lot of it, and um, he's really hit on great points. And I think uh, we've seen both sides of the stories. And um, just as time goes on, I hope we can uh, come to a, a big change in this world and everyone can see eye to eye. Yeah, I think my personal you know, view on that and one thing I – think is one of the most important aspects of a time like this is especially with all that's going on in our country today a lot of people are more willing to listen and educate themselves so making sure that you're taking that in a constructive way and you know having the right conversations not getting down on anybody but just properly educating people whether that's on you know true history of the United States you know a lot of things are covered up more or less uh the bad spots especially towards people of cover people of color and then going towards that not only learning that history and why things are the way they are today but how to go about undoing that whether that's voting uh the protests that are currently happening just everyday uh, education of the community to make sure that those social biases that have been instilled in our communities and countries start to fade away. Uh, just taking advantage of everything we can with this movement and making sure not only is it not for nothing, but we propel it as far as we can. Yeah, I totally agree with Seth. I mean, he hit it. He was spot on. I think it's extremely important to continue educating yourselves. And even if you come across new information that kind of maybe goes against your opinion or is used towards constructing a new opinion, you should definitely acknowledge that and you shouldn't be against having new information. And something that I've noticed is it's all like the younger generation, you know, it's not, of course there's older generations that are getting involved, but what's really catapulting this forward is the younger generations. And like, it's our turn to speak up now and make up for the things that the generation in front of us, didn't do you know like we need to, we need to start educating people more and talking more about things that may be uncomfortable to talk about but they need to be addressed you know it might be the elephant in the room but if we don't address it then there's never going to be true change and there's never going to be positive change you know so that's kind of you know the conversations I've been having with people and um, two of my closest friends actually uh, that I grew up with one of them is like a computer science coder guy and the other one is like really into financing and he's learning to code. So they, um, they started up this new company called Moralizer. It's, it's, a, it's actually a website. It's not really a company. It's a website and it's, we're trying to build a social media platform for discriminated groups. So what people can do is um, if they sign up, they can, we, in the website, we pull from Instagram and Facebook and news outlets and um, petitions and we have donations and stuff like that. So we want to make it as simple as possible where you just go on this website and you get all the information for, you know, Black Lives Matter or NAACP or LGBTQIA+, like all the information that you could possibly get for the groups that you care about and that you're following so that you don't have to go to all that through, through all that work of trying to figure out, you know, what's accurate information, where can I donate, what petitions can I sign, like, we're trying to make it as simple as possible by building this website, um, so we're getting, we're really excited about that, and it's kind of like, we're trying to make a positive change, of course. Some of your experiences, I guess, ones that really stand out to you when, when you think about, uh, you know, racism, or bias, or things like that. Personally, I guess, experiences with racism, I feel like, especially, you know, I am biracial, like my mother's white, my father's black. Uh, my dad always raised me to know that, although I am biracial, that the country is gonna look at me as a black man in America. So I have to act as such, which is something I've definitely not only taken to heart, but seen in everyday life, especially, you know, having a more physically imposing build of, you know, being taller and more muscular that it definitely um, 
I feel like works against me in situations like that. So I, I'd say there, there are everyday biases. You see it almost, you become numb to it at a point where it's kind of hard to just pick out certain instances. There are definitely, you know, very obvious forms of hate and racism you face either growing up or just every day in society. Uh, I guess one I'll point out, I sort of tweeted about it. One of my friends who is an alumni, the University of Minnesota sort of started a thread on Twitter of uh, negative experiences uh, a lot of the black community has had with the police and mine was just, you know, walking home from getting food one night, getting arrested in the middle or detained really in cuffs in the middle of Dinky Town for fitting a description of uh, me and my roommate, two black males, medium build. So, I mean, you know, getting, getting put in cuffs and pulled up with a squad car and the cops having their guns drawn on you is one of those things you sort of realize. I mean, I said it earlier somewhere, I think it wasn't a matter of if I was caught in the wrong situation where I was at the wrong place in the wrong time and accused of something that I didn't do uh, or was linked to something that didn't, you know, affect me. But I, I knew it would happen eventually. So all about handling yourself in those situations and making sure you're doing everything in your power to handle it and diffuse the situation as best possible, keeping everybody, including yourself, calm in high stress situations is one of those things that sort of you have to do in everyday life because, you know, you may not get the uh, benefit of the doubt that other people of that aren't of color would get. Deb, I just want to ask you something. Um, what was kind of like your experience when you know, did you report this? Did you do anything about it? Or did you kind of just have to go with it? Like, did you ever speak up about this situation uh, that happened? No, I mean, it, I didn't speak up about it because it wasn't a, it wasn't egregious. Um, you know, it was one of those things that it was very he say, she say. And of course, you know, was, I didn't even feel like getting into that. Um, I, me and my roommate were luckily to come out, you know, unharmed. It was just the, I don't want to say embarrassment, but the, the being in a situation that you didn't deserve to be in uh, is never a fun time. So I'd say, I, no, I didn't do anything about it, especially because I know how much worse it could have been. Mm. Do you ever like regret it or do you wish that you did or are you kind of just like, no, sorry, happy, I mean, whatever? I mean, it already happened, whatever. Like I said, I know people have had way worse experiences than me over way less. So I'm, you know, just sort of blessed that I'm not only here to tell the story, but that it went in a very, you know, smooth way, regardless of the situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I feel like, uh, just like Seth said, I've been in a, I've been in a, a potential spot just like that. He says whatever thing, he says, she say type thing. And I, uh, not something you want to go through and just like you mentioned at the being a bigger biracial man that I am at the end of the day I am I do come out as a black to the public eye and um it's just situations like that I think um don't don't want to you don't want to wish that on anyone especially people of our color because they can go the wrong way and at the end of the day like like Seth said I think uh, I'm glad that things went smoothly and we're here to talk about it now and, and use our platform to give different variations to it Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Chris, and I'm just, I want to make sure you know, this is one of those, like, I don't want to dominate the conversation. I want all of you all to, you know, jump in whenever you feel like it, uh, just, so, just so you know where we are on this. Um, but yeah, I, man, I think about times in my life where I've, I've seen this kind of thing. Like, my brother reminded me of a time, like, we were all, like, on a road trip somewhere, and um, I'm in the back seat. He's in the back seat. We get pulled over. My dad was speeding, which I, I don't know why he does. He does a lot, but he's and uh, he got pulled over one, and, and we we're just there. And all of a sudden, like I wake up, like I was asleep, and I had like a Game Boy in my hands, and like some light reflected off of it. And the cop was spooked, and the guy draws his gun, and you know, and my dad's like, "Yo, it's my son in the back seat, man. Like, there, there's nothing going on here. Like, yeah, I was speeding, like get my ticket, let's just on the way here, but." Um, so we had that happen. I mean, every single, I can't even tell you how many times I've gotten the like, you're so articulate comment. That, that part was like, fine. Okay. Crazy, yeah. <laughs> right. Like, what do you really expect here? Um, but, 
it, it's something really to, uh, you know, to, for us to really be conscious of, and especially when we talk about sports with you guys. I mean, the, and it even comes down like the way we talk about athletes, right? Like um, a lot of cases you'll hear when we talk about, when some folks are talking about black athletes, they're, they're talking mostly about their physical attributes, like uh, very fast, very strong, athletic. Uh, but then you're talking about like a white athlete, you know, more like a student of the game or hard worker or things like that, you know, and it's very coded uh, types of language, of course. Yeah, Norman, I, I understand what you're saying. Like, I'm, I'm a white person. So obviously, I'm never going to know what it's like to be discriminated against for my skin color. But um, the only discrimination I have ever experienced is discrimination due to my gender. So like, because I'm a female, I experience discrimination because I'm allegedly, you know, not able to do the same work as a man, etc. But I just I think that we have gotten a lot farther with gender rights and gender equality than we have with combating racism. I think that there are too many systems in place that oppress BIPOC, like black indigenous people of color. Like there's, there needs to be more monitoring. There needs to be better training. There needs to be better education on this because like, I'm never going to experience it, or maybe I might, but it is a very, very low chance that I will. But I have really close friends. I have, you know, friends of friends, like people that I'm close with. And I have like people, like my fellow student athletes, you know, and I just, what I don't understand is like, how can you idolize these athletes that are, you know, not white? How do you idolize them and say they're this great athlete, like they're my idol, they're my hero, whatever, but then you know, not stand up for them when there's issues of racism on the table. You know, that's what's really frustrating to me. And although I'll never know what it's like, like I have friends that I've seen go through this and it breaks my heart. Like just listening to like Seth's story, because I don't, I don't know Seth personally, but I, I know that he's a good guy from what I've heard, you know, and like from what I've seen in the media, he's a really good guy. And I'm just like, I can't believe that somebody would just randomly come up to you and try to handcuff you and restrain you and stuff like that just because you were going to get food like I go to get food at night late at night all the time you know and it's just like it breaks my heart and I can't believe that this is something that we're we're even dealing with you know right and to sort of go on sort of the question with the experience of racism I mean sort of the, like we were talking about it's almost like you have to put it in a two categories of like blatant hate and that it's targeted towards you because of the uh the color of your skin and then you have to put the second category of you know the people of privilege ignoring the racism that's going on sort of you know when a lot of times sort of like you're saying of uh when talking about athletes you know especially black athletes is always more physical attributes when talking about athletes that aren't of color making sure or it usually tends to be more student of the game hard working you know attributes that are mental decisions on their part and lifestyle choices is you know a lot of people would sit and argue like you know that's not because of the color of their skin you know uh, that's one thing that sort of links back to what we were saying earlier with the conversations we're having is getting a lot of people to acknowledge a lot of those almost microaggressions and conversations and certain perspectives that are viewed towards black people that are systematically oppressive and racist and things of that sort that have been there to hold black people down but when it's taken those same things are taken in context towards a different you know demographic of people it's looked at in a different manner uh so things like that is is another thing that's sort of hard to deal with and is when people sort of gaslight the issue and you know decredit it when it's towards people of color but at the same time if it was towards a person that wasn't of color, it would, you know, be very cut and dry of the reason of the issue and things of that sort. Mm -hmm. Kristen, I want to get your take on this. I, I know you, you were in a discussion with USA, USA Diving recently, uh, just discussing, you know, racial, social injustice and things like that. But um, as far as, you know, where, where we are in sport and society, um, like what is it that 
What is it that stands out the most to you right now? For like racism in general? Yeah, like it's, yeah. if you're seeing in the sport or, or anything like that, or even in society, just whatever is on your mind. So what's standing out to me a lot is how shocked people are after seeing the video of George Floyd and they're like, oh my goodness, like this is happening. And, I, and I'm saying like, this has been happening. There's a reason why we've been saying Black Lives Matter for so long. And it's like sounding that it's took a video of a man being killed in an inhumane way for people's eyes to be opened. And I see this a lot in like on my feed is that people are like, I'm now educating myself. And these people aren't 10, like their 20s, almost 30s, that they are now just educating themselves about this. And they're now realizing that this is happening. And that is like the biggest shock for me. Are you guys getting a sense that this is, this time it's less a trend and more a commitment when we talk about uh, what we're addressing in society? I, I would say this is, seems like it's a bigger movement than what it ever was before because it's not even just the US that's happening, it's all over the world that people are standing up and saying Black Lives Matter. So that's where I saw that this video that went out and all of this going down in the whole Black Lives Matter movement seems that it's taking a bigger step in the right direction. Yeah, I agree with Kristen. Like, I know that a lot of people were saying, like, you know, George Floyd is like this guy who had a previous criminal record, whatever. But I don't, I just, I think that people are too focused on being like, it's all because of George Floyd. Like, George Floyd was the straw that broke the camel's back. Like, there's so much more that happened before George Floyd happened that people are only concentrating on, like, the fact that George Floyd was, like, a previous criminal and, you know, maybe he, he might have had, like, a, a fraudulent check or whatever, which is still, you know, there's still no evidence of that. So I think, like, addressing that with people and saying, like, look, it's been a long time coming and this is not the only thing that should be bringing your attention to this. Like there have been previous issues. I remember like two years ago, I, so I'm from Canada and um, I spent, you know, m the last four years in, in Minneapolis for the most part, like even some of the summers. And I think for the summer, I came home for a week to Toronto and my parent, and something happened in the news where there was like a video of a man being shot in his car. He wasn't, he was unarmed, nothing. He just got shot in his car, shot dead. And my parents were like, what is happening? Like, where did this come from? And I'm like, mom, dad, like this is, this happens all the time. This is not the only time that this has happened, you know? And people are saying, oh, you know, this guy, George Floyd, like he's our hero. And it's like, you know, like he's, he's really, he didn't deserve what happened to him. And unfortunately, like, I hope he's resting in peace. Cause unfortunately what happened to him was extremely just, you can't do that kind of stuff. But it was definitely this, like I said, the straw that broke the camel's back because there's so much more that has happened before and is, that is happening after. And people need to make sure to pay attention to that and like really broaden their horizons on what's going on and how many, just how many, how many times this has happened? How many situations there have been like this? And could there continue to be every single day I see some sort of new update on like a new person that was harmed or that was killed. And it's just like, you know, I just, I hope that it ends at some point. Like, I hope it ends today, but unfortunately, I don't think it will. That is personally one thing I think is really different about this time of the movement gaining so much, you know, power and influences. I've noticed not only is it about awareness, especially, you know, right after the incident with George Floyd and uh all of all of the national and worldwide attention we got or it got the event did um the city just sort of the issue in general all of the coverage sort of brought it to light but i think the difference between now and things that have occurred in the past is how much people are focused on how to change it and what we have to do as a country and community to make sure that something 
really does change rather than just talking about it, uh, wearing a t-shirt, going to a protest, and then things going back to whatever the normal was. I feel like that's the main difference between the movement this time is the amount of action that is going to have long-term effects from this. They hit a perfect signing, bro. <laughs> I got you. Yeah, like, are you guys – I know the, the, thing, the immediate thing that happened was I had a lot of folks reaching out to me around my age group, not much older than you guys, um, wanting to know, like, how can I be better? How can I do more? How can I step up and be a better person, better ally, better friend, this and that and the other? Um, I'm sure you guys have heard some of the same stuff, um, but what has that been like? Um, I think uh, it's actually been kind of cool to see how many people have actually like reached out to us and me especially, and I, I bet a lot of the guys have reached out to the people in this group message too. And um, just at the end of the day, it's all about learning and, and growing from the situation. And we hope that this these never occur again. And I like, we can go on Twitter and you can just see a bunch of more pop up. And it's just crazy, like how you, how like the social media world can grab one thing off Facebook that has, that has been deleted and it just pops up again on Twitter and it pop up again on Snapchat and you'll get a text message from it. And it's just a, uh, the amount of things that still go on is literally like baffling to me. And I bet it's baffling to, to the other people in this chat too, just to see like how the world really is and how, how people have shown their true colors during this time. Going off of what Gable just said is people showing their true colors. Um, it, it brought my attention to those who, when all this was going down and I mean, it's still going on, all those people who just kind of turned their head pretended that it wasn't happening and to know like how powerful our platforms are for social media and how we need to help educate other people about um, all of this that's going on that just one poster on your story could do so much or say so much and those people who just carry on with their lives and pretend that nothing happens like shows some people's true colors and what they really stand for and but going off of that like those people who have reached out to me like that feels so good to know that someone is checking up in on me or that they care that they have my back that I don't feel like I have to go through all of this alone yeah I mean I've I've had a similar experience I've made sure to reach out to all of my friends and and kind of like what Norma, what you were saying, like ask them, how could I be better? How can I advocate for you guys? And how can I make sure that like, I'm not being ignorant and that I'm continuing to better myself and continuing to educate myself. And kind of like, I was, I was actually really fortunate because I was talking, Kristen, before you came on, I was telling Gable and Seth and Norman about um, this website that my friends and I are putting together. And um, because of that website, what we made sure to do is reach out to a lot of people in the BIPOC community and kind of talk to them about like, what do you want to see? What is going to make this website something that is resourceful and something where you can feel like you're, you can um, be an activist and where you can find resources? Um, the website's called moralizer.com, by the way. Um, and we're kind of in the early stages and we're working to to get it live as soon as we can. Um, the server just can't handle a whole lot of people right now. But what we did is like, we went downtown Toronto and like would stop people on the street and like tell them about it and be like, you know, is, with your experience as a black or indigenous or a person of color or a biracial, like what's your experience with that? And how can we advocate for you on this website and make sure that your voice is heard and make sure that you are able to access a space that is safe and that is helpful to you and your causes and stuff like that. So um, I'm really hoping that we could speed up the process of getting this website going, but it's just a little hard right now with everything. Um, but yeah. Like you go to school, you study, you play sport, and people tend to forget pretty much everything else. And you guys are, to them, to many people, you're the athlete. And then when you start to use your platform, when you start to understand uh, kind of the power that it has, that, that your own voice has. Um, and I'm sure you might get pushback every now and again from some unnamed 
Twitter bot or whatever. Um, but at the same time, there are people who would look up to you. Um, and I'm sure none of you take that lightly. Yeah, I never really noticed how many people actually followed and watched my stories until after I was posting about all of these Black Lives Matters and how to educate yourself. And I was having not only people my age, older than me, parents who are like, I'm going to go like donate money now or thank you so much for educating us for this or and using these platforms is a way that we can spread this movement and help educate people. Because I think that's one of the biggest things that we need to do is to help educate. And by educating, then we can take steps towards in the right direction. Right. And that's, you know, just... Kristen hit it on the head with you don't realize how many people you really you know are reaching when you post something on your story whether you tweet something and you know you really see how social media has given everybody a platform to reach just an amazing amount of people so you you want to make sure especially being a student athlete in our shoes you got to use it the right way. You don't want to overflow people's timelines with maybe unimportant stuff. You got to make sure that you're, you know, doing your best to present the best information and making sure that whatever you're putting out there is worthwhile and worth people's times when they are, you know, reading it, uh, taking it to go educate themselves further, going and maybe supporting by, you know, donating, things of that sort, just making sure that you know, you do have the platform and you're realizing how big that platform really can get. So making sure that you're using it to the best of your ability and not misusing it in any way. Uh, one thing I'm interested to ask you all about too is the concept of canceling people. Um, we, you see a lot, someone digs up something somebody said maybe five, years ago or some as far as five years back doesn't matter something somebody said and then it's like get them out the paint we're done with you. um but you also have the idea that you know you give people a little bit of grace to to you can get things wrong as long as you're willing to get them right um it's kind of the way i thought about it um what are your what are your else thoughts on this i mean personally i agree with you completely you know a lot of times in situations like that, you definitely recognize the intent that comes with it. And with that, it's the, the after process of, you know, educating what was meant, why you were wrong and making sure that they, you know, learn and fully understand and grow from that experience and realize whatever they did wasn't okay and why not only them, but they should stick up and stand up for other people not to do it and make that same mistake or do that same action obviously depending on what it is but I think a big difference comes when people do the opposite and sort of show their true colors like we were talking about earlier especially in a time of emotion I think that's when you can sort of see people's true colors the most like I saw there was a video the other day at a protest some woman wearing all confederate flag stuff screaming like I'm gonna teach my grandkids to hate you and things of that sort which is just is disgusting honestly but you know at the end of the day like that's them like you just pray that god changes their heart like you don't have to take that whole burden on yourself but at the end of the day and a person like that in my opinion issuing an apology is more of a you know self cover and more for selfish reasons rather than actually you know learning and willing to grow you sort of see especially with things that are a lot more premeditated and things during high emotion you sort of see where people truly stand i agree is that um what we need to do is educate so what someone posted in the past and they weren't educated about the subject then i can't judge them from what they didn't know and a lot of uh these things are fear of the unknown also so then once someone has 
been in a situation like a lot of if I hear something racist on the pool deck for say and I mean I'm one of probably five or six like girl black girl divers and I'm in a community where it's a lot of white white people and they haven't been around a lot of black people and if I hear them say something racist they may not know that you can't say that because of X, Y, and Z. And so looking at someone's past statement, if they weren't educated about it, I wouldn't judge it. But if you educate them and then they do it again, then I would say, all right, then that's their choice. And yeah, I think uh, going off what they're saying, I think uh, with the wrestling community, it's uh, it's a practically predominantly white Caucasian for all wrestlers. And I think I'm the only black wrestler on the Minnesota team and uh, like they all mentioned, just educating other people. And I think uh, I put out a lot of stuff about what, what recently happened with the George Floyd and a lot of Black Lives Matter things. And just like my experiences too. And uh, I've received good and bad mentions in my Twitter comments. And I think um, like uh, Seth said, we gotta God let, we, gotta, we have to let God uh, lead their way. And hopefully they understand what, what we go through day by day and see that life is different on both sides. And we just, at the end of the day, we just want one equal thing instead of just a bunch of little random things put together. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's good. I really agree with, uh, I, I, I really liked the way Kristen phrased it, um, but everybody, everybody did a really great job of kind of saying it. Like, I think that it's important to keep in mind the way that people acted in the past and kind of what brought them to someone's attention and why you might want to cancel them. Um, and I think, you should take that into consideration because I know I know the video that Seth is talking about with the lady who was like screaming about teaching her grandkids to hate black people or whatever um and then when she issued her apology the next day I was like how do you in 24 hours how are you a completely changed woman like what you did was like it, it was despicable and then all of a sudden you've had a change of heart like you really need to consider I really need to like think about like what did she do and and does it really does her apology really fix what she did and what steps is she going to take in the future? And I think that only time will tell whether people who got canceled are actually making strides towards becoming better advocates. Um, So I really think it's a time thing. You have to see what did they do in the past and how did they work towards becoming a better version of themselves when it comes to issues on racism and inequality. Yeah, going off of when you said that they need to work towards is that racism is taught. Like that's something where if you see little kids at preschool playing around, like they're not being like, oh, I don't like you because you're dark skin or anything. Like racism is taught. No, or like, let's say that lady would have taught her grandson or whatever to not like black people we can't just hate him unless he because he was taught that way but with all of this going on these people by educating ourselves by putting on our platform what's going on hopefully we can change people's hearts and realize that oh like this is what I was taught but that's not correct so that's why I also wouldn't want to cancel someone out because you don't know what house they grew up on you can't choose your parents you don't know what they they taught you as well So that's why also using our platforms is huge for right now at this moment in time. Yeah, and for you guys to have, I mean, obviously, you know, the the Paul's great putting you guys together for this, but to have obviously the university behind you on this um, and other organizations at at the very least learning, um, if not completely falling in to to support you guys, uh, what does that mean to you? You know, I appreciate the blessing and opportunity that all of, you know, the school, the conference, all of these organizations have been giving us not only a chance, you know, even y'all, a chance for us to use our platform, educate more people, insinuate the change that we want to see. Uh, but it's it's something that you can't take for granted, sort of like, you know, I was saying earlier, it all goes back to it, just making sure you're, you know, sending the right message, 
pointing people in the right direction, doing everything the right way is just making sure that you're not going to take this opportunity and waste it and make it as meaningful as possible. I agree with Seth that during this time, we need to use our platforms to our advantage in the best way that we can. But also uh, going off of what your question is, how does it feel to have like the university supporting us? It, it feels comforting because when I come to school, I wanna know that people will stand by me if something goes down or that they're supporting my community and seeing that something's going on, they're not just turning a blind eye to it and saying, oh, that's not my problem. They're saying, I, like, I'm here for you. I support you. I have your back. And even like, as USA Diving also wanted me to talk about it and them saying that they support me. It just feels comforting because this is my home. What I do is I go to school at Minnesota. I stay there. I dive. I dive for USA Diving. And this is where I'm putting all my time into. And I want to know that these people have my back. And because this is, this is what we do. Like our sports, we represent Minnesota. And we want Minnesota to represent us and to have our backs and to support us fully with it, whether it's on the field or in the pool and off. I like that. It's a good point. Um, so one thing I'd like to ask you guys now is as far as media goes, um, where are we getting it right? Where are we getting it wrong? Where can we do better? Go more in detail with that. That's a loaded well, question. It is a loaded question. Are we talking about are we talking about currently or in the in in the past? I say currently. I mean, because I think we're starting to really figure it out. Like here, like again, I've I've got great support here at the office, right? So like when when it comes to things like this, they're like mm -hmm. absolutely drive these conversations, take the lead, do what you gotta do. And they've they've committed to as far as uh, you know, the kind of voices that they're looking for, they're like you know, absolutely get more people of color involved in this kind of storytelling that we do. Um, the way we portray communities, things like that. So that that's yeah. kind of what, what I'm what I'm uh, what I'm kind of hitting. Right. I know. I mean, I I feel like that's that's going in the right direction. Or um, kind of like what you were saying is making sure you get you know the right portrayal put out by the people of color in the community, because I know. I'm not saying y'all specifically, but I know one thing that was a big issue right when everything happened with the George Floyd situation is everybody was covering the negative, the, you know, the, the riots, the looting, the, you know, all the civil unrest. And it was even a conversation I had with my dad. I was like, yo, like I'm going to go out and protest. And he's like, you know, you're, you're a target, like be safe out there. And it was very hard for me, not to any of his fault, but it was very hard for me to explain to him that during the day, how peaceful and how much of a sense of community it was in the city, whether it was at Ground Zero at 38th in Chicago, whether it was the cleanups that were going on in South Minneapolis by the Cub, the Aldi, where the Wendy's and AutoZone were, whether it was downtown during the marches, you know, it was, it was something that, you know, I also took pride with a lot of videographers I know would go down there and, you know, record all of it. And I know a lot of them got a lot of flack for the positive message they were putting out because it was going against what big media outlets were putting of all the negative stuff that was happening and all of that. So just making sure you continually, you know, obviously there's negative stuff that happens every day, but making sure the light is shed on the positive and the direction that the people are looking to take the movement, I feel like that's that's the biggest aspect of it. Yep, I agree with that. It's like when the, the times that they would send me out there, um, and it was, I think it's probably specifically because I am primarily a sports guy. Mm -hmm. um, they, they would have me um, or let me just go to where I thought was important. Um, and I, and I did try to go, you know, during the day to some of the things that were happening, you know, clean up, uh, food efforts, things like that. Yeah. But I also realized, like, that's just me. That's just one person, right? Like, it's a, it's a whole lot of other folks out there doing uh, whatever mm -hmm. they're doing. Um, and 
it's it is a it's a tough part like this has been very physically tough on me um and i don't mean to like this is not for pity or anything i'm saying like it's it's like it hits home but at the same time like there's there's a lot that that um you know i have to do my best to kind of keep an even keel on it but or uh, yeah like i mean I, I remember i think earlier on and everything going out it was like later at night um but up you know in north minneapolis it was some uh it was a grocery store it was a grocery store and people were there who they were ex-gang members most of them uh mm -hmm. but they were all packing they were all like we're gonna protect this store like if somebody comes up in here trying to cause problems like we got some for them and i was like well, this is great. This is positive. I mean, like it's it, it's terrible that it has to come to this, but I mean, this is this is a community looking out for itself, you know, um, right. where yeah, you know everybody else may not be. But I mean, I'm I'm kind of with you guys on that. It is it's kind of a tough thing to kind of ride that line to see, uh, you know, how things are done. Um, but I'm I mean, I'm glad at the very least with with our organization that it's that it's it's very forward focused but I can't speak for everybody on that but exactly um I at least have that which is nice but anything else on your guys minds pondering everything and like I think that the most important thing to remember is we need to stop continuing to find a reason to be segregated. Like I feel like, like Seth was saying, um, you know, people right away started talking about the bad things that George Floyd did or the bad things that are coming out of Black Lives Matter, all this stuff. And I just feel like, or, or talking about you know, even people that were doing stuff like looting stores, these, there were some people, I don't know if these people were actually fighting for the cause or if they were just taking the opportunity to loot. But I just think stuff like that continues to segregate people. Like you, by looting, you make the people that are participating in peaceful protests and actually trying to make a positive change. You're taking the spotlight away from those people and putting it on yourself. If you're somebody who's looting or trying to bring negative attention to this cause, you know what I mean? So you're not helping the cause at all. So I think it's important to remind ourselves like we need to stop we need to find some sort of middle ground and we need to come together we can't continue to segregate like who's part of the conservative or liberal party who thinks that black people don't you know don't deserve the same rights as white people like we just need to come together and all you know say like we have to just be equal it doesn't matter the color of your skin your gender you know any your, your walk of life your background it doesn't matter you know you you have the right to like you know, have shelter and have food and have protection and it shouldn't matter what the color of your skin is or your gender or any of that stuff, you know, and I just, I think that the media is constantly trying to um, make people pick sides and it, that just needs to stop, you know, we should just report the facts. We shouldn't be like, well, this guy said this and then here's what he said and she said, you know. Yeah, and growing up, that is the media right now wants to make it political, but it's yeah. not political at all. It's us versus racism in general. And yeah. by saying, I hear still see a lot of people saying all lives matter. And the thing is, that's not what we're saying. We're saying black lives matter because we're getting murdered and all this police brutality, like we're saying our lives matter and are equal as someone with fair skin. And I saw this example of saying it as in, if my house was burning, I would say like, oh, I need help. And they're like, oh no, all houses matter. Like, no, like mine's burning down, I need help. Or if you're at a convention for breast cancer, someone's not gonna run in and say, well, all cancers matter. Like, of course all cancers matter, but right now we're focusing on breast cancer. So that's, that's something that I wanted to mention because we're not saying that all lives don't matter. All lives do matter, but right now we need help and to put focus on all this uh, police brutality that's going on and it needs to stop. Yeah, that's a great point, Kristen. It's a great example. Yeah, it's like, uh, I don't know how much, uh, some of y'all may be biblical, but it's like the uh, the 99 sheep and it's the one that got lost. 
you know. <laughs> I was literally just want to bring that up. I brought it up with the uh, when I did with the NCA and there, just like we mentioned, like on the last question, just the opportunities people are giving us, and I had the opportunity that the NCA wrestling and everyone else just gave me a gave me the chance to go on there and talk for like forty minutes. And uh, at the end of the video, I mentioned the, the ninety nine sheep and just like the house, the house thing that Chris said. And I think uh, the ninety nine is the all lives matter, and that one that one lost sheep is the Black Lives Matter. And uh, people got to understand that there's a right now it's not about the all lives matter. I mean, all lives do at the end of the day. Everyone is. I hope everyone can can see that all lives do matter. But at this time of day, I think it's it's mainly important that just Black Lives Matter. We have to excel in our own way, and that's where the one sheep is. Mm -hmm.